we as Christians have hope. It sustains us. John 5, 28 and 29 says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. And those that have done good unto the resurrection of life and for those that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. We're also promised in Revelations 21, 3 and 4, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall no, be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, and neither shall there be any more pain for the former things have passed away. It sounds pretty good to me. Thank you.
I'd like to take, uh, take this opportunity to thank Patty, Margaret, Moon, Janet, and everyone who had a hand in putting this program together. Mary Jane, sorry. Listen, that remembrance that you gave was beautiful. Amen. That touched me and brought tears to my eyes. Uh, and sometimes that's kind of that can be hard to do. Yeah, that was beautiful. Again, as we remember Janet, and we come here to pay respects to her, realize what Ray said, that we don't mourn like the world that has no hope. But in Christ, we have a hope that should burn in our hearts, that will give us comfort and peace, and that will allow us to know that though we say goodnight to her, it's not goodbye. And that there will come a day when we will see her again. Brothers and sisters, I, uh, yesterday, you know, Gary, was it Thursday? Yes. Thursday attended the funeral for Phyllis Gambino. I said Phyllis lived to be 102. Um, Phyllis had been a Seventh-day Adventist for the majority of her life, and that was a long time. Um, having to think about saying goodbye to Phyllis. Phyllis was one of the first people that I met I got to meet my daughter, uh, and then coming here and having to speak for Janet. Um, I want you to realize that again, what kind of hope we had in Christ. Ray, like you, when I first met Janet, I don't know if Janet ever met anybody that wasn't a friend. If she liked you, she liked you. Now, if she didn't like you, <laughs> there was an issue there. And you knew it. But Janet always liked to hug. Janet always liked to talk and to be around people. And Janet liked her church. No, Janet loved her church. Janet loved her church family. Uh, one of the things as a pastor is if your congregation cannot be ashamed to invite people to come to church, that's a good sign. And Janet did that. She would always talk and invite people to come to the church. But this afternoon what I'd like to do is look at some scripture for this hope that we have. Now the first scripture that I want you to turn to is Mark chapter 10, verse 45. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. You might not have ever heard this at a, at a funeral or at a memorial service, but I want you to listen carefully why I picked these scriptures. Mark chapter 10, and verse 45. Jesus makes a promise here. He says that even the Son of Man did not come to serve, or not come to be served, but He came to what? He came to serve. And here's the promise. To give His life as a what? A ransom. Do you understand what that means? I'm oh, sorry, I can't step over the mic. But yeah, I'll lock myself in here. To give His life as a ransom. Do you understand what that means? Because... We talk about, as Adventists, the second coming. And that's what our hope is built upon, Jesus coming back. But Peter tells us that in the last days, the world is going to have scoffers, and they're going to ask, where is the promise of His coming? Because the fathers have fallen asleep, and He still hasn't come. And yet here we are, 2,000 years later, preaching, speaking, sharing the same thing, saying this is the hope that burns in us, that Christ will come again. And when Christ comes again, He will raise Janet up on that day, and Janet will ever be with her Lord. 
Now, that scripture tells you that Jesus gave his life a ransom. What does a ransom mean? He paid a price. And he paid the price for Janet. And if he gave himself on that cross to die that kind of horrible death, don't you think he'd come back and fulfill his promise? That's what we stand on. Jesus promised you. And he sealed that promise with his blood and with his death. That if he gives himself as a ransom, he'll come back and take what now is rightfully his. Amen. And brothers and sisters, that's <coughs> Janet, and that's you and I. Amen. So that's Mark. Turn with me to 1 Timothy, chapter 2, let's look at verse 6. First Timothy chapter two, verse six. Paul, describing Jesus, tells us that Jesus gave himself, here's that word again, a what? A ransom for all to be testified in due time. I want you to understand what Jesus did when he gave himself as a ransom. And that if he did all this to promise that he's going to come back, do you think that what he did is worthy enough to allow us to believe 2,000 years later that he's still going to come back? Yes. Right? Do you stand on firm, solid ground in the second coming of Jesus Christ? Yes. Now, brothers and sisters, like I said, I went to Phyllis's... Um, funeral service, and there was uh, another pastor there, and um, he gave a really good service. He preached Janet right there with Jesus. Okay? I'm sorry, Phyllis. Now, now this is what I love about the beliefs that Janet held to, and that was the beliefs from the Adventist church. And this whole service, he never talked about the second coming of Jesus because he didn't need to because he believed that Janet was there already. Why would Jesus need to come back? Phyllis, come back with names. <laughs> so listen. Phyllis believed the same. Yes. That's why they had me there. <laughs> no, serious, that's why they had me there. They, they wanted an Adventist there to, to speak. And that's the text that I gave them in Mark. That Jesus paid a ransom for us. And that if we fall asleep, because of what he did and the price he paid, his promise is good and he will come back for us. Amen. Okay? And so Paul tells us the same thing. Now let's look at some more text. Let's go back to Mark chapter 14 and verse 62. Mark 14. was at Jesus' trial. The leaders were asking him, and they asked him very plainly. Again, the priest asked him, asked him, saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. Now listen. This is going to be Mark chapter 14, verse 62. <laughs> yes, Mark 14, 62. Was Jesus sinless? Yes. yes. Did he ever lie? No. no. Did he ever exaggerate the truth? No. no. So, what he said, can you count on it to be true? Yes. yes. Now they asked him plainly, are you the Son of God? And he said yes, but he didn't end it there. Listen to what he says. He says, I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power, and what? Coming with the clouds of heaven. What coming is that? The second coming. Brothers and sisters, as we think about all the loved ones that we have laid to rest, and those who are hid in Jesus Christ, and we wait for that day when Christ will come back in the clouds of glory, and that the scriptures tells us when he comes back, he will call the dead in Christ, and they will come forth. Amen. 
is that going to be a day where you're going, oh man, I hope this ends really soon because I've got other things to do. Right? Are you going to be going, man, come on, Jesus, i got a TV show to watch. Or going, you know, man, we've been sitting here for a while. He's not ready yet. I want you to think about where your priorities are at. Because on that day, this is what the world has been waiting for from the fall of Adam Amen. to the death of the last person before Jesus comes. And that's that blessed hope, the fulfillment of Jesus coming back in the clouds of glory to bring those who have fallen asleep back to life so that they will never have to face pain, sickness, suffering, or death ever again. Now, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that this should be the hope that burns in our hearts. Amen. And this should be something that comforts us as we gather for a service like this. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 55. And Ray, I'd like you to stand up and read that for us. Ricky, I'm going to have you turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And I want you to read verses 14 through 17. Come on here. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 55. Well, now, Ricky, you're going to go 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 14 through 17. Everybody ready? Okay. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. And we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpets shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. First up, first Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 4, 14 to 17. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we see, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. 18? Something wrong with that. Yeah, I didn't say anything. You said that's hard to pop. Look at it. Close. This one plugs in. I've got the volume down. Okay. Let me read it. Okay. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, are those words comforting? Yes. Amen. Are those words something that you can look forward to? Yes. Those of us who have felt the sting of death, laying loved ones into the grave, losing those that we love, we have these words of comfort. Now let me ask you a question. Can you trust the words of Jesus? Sorry. Can you trust the words of Scripture? Yes. When the Bible tells us that Jesus has the power to raise the dead, is it true? Yes. Do you understand that when Jesus laid or raised Lazarus from the tomb, you understand why he called him specifically by name? Yes. yes. Brothers and sisters, the God that you serve 
the God that Janet placed all of her hope in, will not let her down. Nor will he forget her or leave her in this sleeping state. But Jesus has promised to come back and he has promised to raise her again. Now let me ask you this question. When Janet is raised, is she going to be raised the same way she went down? Is she going to have that same sick, frail body? No. no. Isn't that a good thing? Yeah. Isn't that something to look forward to? That when Jesus raises you, if you sleep in death, that when he brings you back, you will be brought back in the vigor of youth? Yeah. And that God will take away all need for doctors? Yeah. All need for glasses? All need for medications. Janet, Janet was so funny. Janet did not, as Mary Jane said, did not want to take chemo. She did not trust the doctors. And if you knew Janet, Janet did what Janet wanted and only what Janet wanted. And if her mind was made up, boy, it was a hard thing to get her to think something different. Um, I had many conversations with Janet. Um, and some, some good, some hard, but you always knew where you stood with Jen. And I respected her, and I loved her, and I miss her, but I know that I'll see her again. Amen. And I know that this great God that we serve is a God of love and compassion, and that death was never part of His plan. Amen. That death is an enemy Death is an invader, and death is in the realm of Satan. But life is in the hands of our God. And Janet, on that day, will be raised again. The question is, is those that are here today, whether you sleep or whether you're alive when Jesus comes, are you ready for His coming? Are you ready to meet your Lord and Savior? Have you given your heart fully and completely to Jesus Christ? Jesus doesn't want 80% of your heart. He doesn't want 99% of your heart. Jesus wants all or nothing. And so, one of the great things for a pastor at a memorial service is that it gets people to think about their own mortality. We get so busy with our day-to-day -day lives that sometimes we put off the thinking of what happens if I die? Or what happens if Jesus comes back? Do I have a living relationship with Him? Do I know Him? But more than that, does He know me? Because brothers and sisters, the Bible doesn't say, if you know Jesus, He's going to tell you to come here. The Bible says that if He knows you or if He doesn't know you, and if you're in that line where you go, Jesus, I thought I knew you, and He says, I never knew you depart from me. Those are the saddest words any human being could ever hear. You need to make sure that you're not in that group. How do you do that? By giving your heart fully and completely to Him. Allowing Him to be not just your Savior, but your Lord. That you trust Him completely, fully, with all of your life. Brothers and sisters, it's a decision you'll never regret. Do you believe that God loves you? Yes. Do you believe that God is love? Yes. And why do we run so far from Him? Why do we not give Him all that we are and all that we have? Why do we try to hold on so tightly? At some point, whether in life or whether on your deathbed, you'll be brought to these thoughts and these decisions. I've seen a lot of death. And I've never seen one like where it's on TV where they just close their eyes and they die and it's nice and easy and peaceful. That's the struggle. Because it was never supposed to happen. And those of you who have experienced people who die, you realize there's a process they go through. And you don't know what goes on inside the mind, what kind of battles are going on. But what I do know, what I've experienced is those that know Christ, they have a peace that can't be explained. They have an assurance 
that they're able to rest and to die and realize this isn't the end. There's no question mark of, well, what happens after this? They know, and they know whom they believed in, and they know that he will come back for them. So brothers and sisters, as I close this morning, think about where your walk is with Jesus Christ. If you've accepted him, if you haven't, ask yourself, why not? And when will you? Don't allow your time to run out. Right now, we're going to open it up to uh, memories of Janet, and the first one is going to be Kyla. I need you to come on up here. You guys have noticed this, but she was waving her hand to me because she wanted to make sure I did not forget her. <laughs> she's she's been working on this for a while. Mm -hmm. Gary, can you turn this on? Yep. Kyla, come on right up here and talk into this one. Okay. Thank you. 